y'all i'm a curious cat okay my entire life has been a lie and i didn't find out about it until i was 22. so now i question everything and i'm extremely skeptical of people in positions of power and what the big boys are telling us and feeding us and i feel like that's rightfully so um but my curiosity has yet to kill me and tonight on this fine thursday evening i'm going to talk to you guys about one of the oddest occurrences you probably haven't heard of and i only found out about like three years ago and what's even crazier is even after nearly 30 years we still have no resolution for what happened they have given us some like half-ass explanations but the explanations that they presented were not what they thought they were because if it like i don't know about anyone else but when i heard like the justifications and explanations it didn't leave me with like closure it left me with like more questions now i want to know more now my curiosity is absolutely peaked so yeah welcome back to my channel and if you're new hello um let's talk about some weird jelly rain that came down back in the 90s before i was even born august 7th 1994 in small town oakville washington officer david lacy is on patrol with his civilian homie and it starts to rain which isn't a problem because it's washington however it became a problem when the windshield wipers were doing their little thing and it began smearing this petroleum jelly like substance across the windshield to the point where bro can't even see anymore so they pulled over into this gas station they got out uh officer lacy put gloves on to like inspect it and it was like this weird translucent like blob after he inspects this little blob with gloves within 24 hours he starts to feel nauseous and dizzy like couldn't breathe right then there's dotty hearn dotty lives on a little farm and when it started raining initially she thought it was hail until i guess the rain or blobs were like hitting this wooden box she had outside and it was just like like plopping weird so she went over and she touched it and she's like what the fuck is this later she starts feeling dizzy and nauseous and she starts puking and her daughter sunny and her son found her like sprawled out on the bathroom floor and they had to take her to the hospital and she was hot dotty was hospitalized for four days so dotty hearn's daughter is sunny barcliffe and her and her brother also reported feeling like weird symptoms of like vertigo and whatnot after like coming in contact with these blobs and again like sunny used gloves to like inspect the blobs as well and she still started feeling ill well she went back to her mom's farm to like check on the animals and her mom had a kitten and she saw the kitten like laying on the ground looking like it was nearly dead and she picked up this cat and she saw that the cat had like this weird jelly shit on its whiskers and around its mouth and she realized only oh, fuck he ate he ate the blob brain <laughs> So she spent the next several days trying to nurse this little kitten back to health. And unfortunately, the kitten ended up passing away. And this is a quote from Sunny that I found on medium.com. The quote said, it has been reported on some websites that the kitten had digestive issues prior to the fallout, but that's not true. Also, it wasn't just like a few people that got sick. It was like nearly the entire town's small population of like 720 something at that time. And they all like randomly came down with like flu-like symptoms and they were like experiencing symptoms of vertigo and extreme nausea and whatnot and it wasn't something that like ran its course within like a few days to a week a lot of people were experiencing these symptoms for up to like seven weeks there was another lady named beverly roberts and she too also went to inspect the little blobs when she noticed that it was like blobs and not rain falling from the sky and she said these blobs were like the size of like half of a grain of rice um and she took like samples of the blobs 
And she said as she was collecting these samples, she noticed like a dead frog and a dead raven. And it was reported by several people throughout the town that larger animals like dogs and cats and other, like I'm not 100% sure what other animals, but other animals were falling ill or passing away too around the same time this rain started occurring. And I just want to point out that this rain, it like within a three week time period, this jelly rain occurred six times. So thankfully, no people ended up dying from this uh, random illness that ran rampant through the town. So while Dottie Hearn was in the hospital, her doctor tried diagnosing her with something called Mariner's disease, which is like an inner ear infection. But what's weird about that is Mariner disease, typically the symptoms of it are reoccurring. Like they don't, there's no cure for it. It's just something that continues to happen. However, once Dottie, like, once whatever was going on with Dottie ran its course, she has never felt those same symptoms again. So when she ended up getting discharged from the hospital four days later, the doctor ended up, like, blaming it on some kind of weird virus that she picked up along the way. Um, the doctor didn't suspect that it had anything to do with the weird jelly rain. And Dottie even said that it could be some weird coincidence, but her daughter Sunny does not think so. So Sunny Barcliffe, Dottie's daughter, is a bad bitch. And she knew that something was weird with this jelly rain. She knew it because not only is it jelly falling from the sky, but it's like everybody around her that came into contact with it was falling ill. So Dottie, not Dottie, sorry. So Sunny collected several samples of this like jelly rain and she took it to the hospital and she convinced a lab technician to inspect it. The lab technician discovered that the blob contained human white blood cells. The lab technician encouraged Sunny to take the samples to Washington State Department of Health, where microbiologist Mike McDowell also studied the blobs. So Mike McDowell tested the blobs and he discovered that the blobs contain two types of bacteria, one of which develops in the human digestive system, but they couldn't figure out why. Eventually, he concluded that the substance was man-made and that the jelly ring was used as like a vessel to transport the virus or the bacteria without it dying. So Mike McDowell reported his findings to his supervisor and then he came back to work the next day and the samples were gone. <laughs> And he confronted his boss about it. And his boss just told him not to ask any questions. Mike McDowell, at the point in time which he obtained these blobs, he had been in this career field for 30 years. And in his 30 years, he not a single damn time lost a sample. He never lost a piece of evidence. So now it's weird that he has this sample of some weird jelly that fell from the sky and it could potentially be connected to the town falling ill and it contains human white blood cells. So this very suspicious sample after he reports his finding goes missing and his boss tells him not to ask any questions about it that's fucking weird. So Mike McDowell has done a couple of interviews about like what he found, but you can tell in the interviews that he's kind of like reluctant to do so. He's retired from the company now, but like during the time when he was speaking on it, you could tell he was just like kind of hesitant about what he was saying. And it's because his boss like told him not to ask questions. And I'm assuming they were telling him not to like go in too much detail when he was like doing these interviews and stuff. Again, Sunny Barclay bad bitch has several samples of this weird jelly rain and she wants to figure out why the hell this rain has occurred and people are falling ill for several months in her town and animals are just dropping dead left and right so about a year after the original sample goes missing she hits up this private research lab and it's determined that biologically these cells come from animals meaning that they were alive but they couldn't figure out where it came from. Not to be a buzzkill, but just to remove the little tinfoil hat for just a moment, because I feel like it would be very irresponsible if I didn't include this piece of information. Mike Osweiler from the Department of Ecolo Ecology, Ecology? 
oh my god i can't say words he studied the blobs and he found a bunch of cells and a bunch of cells of different sizes he thinks they came from dead non-human creatures and the reason why he thinks that is because the cells didn't have a nuclei which meant that it couldn't be human white blood cells so i'm skeptical about that and the reason why i'm skeptical about that is because for one why did the original sample go missing i get that things get misplaced but you would think that a whole town falling ill after this weird rain that is happening it's happening nowhere else i just want to add that it is literally exclusively oakville washington you would think that a sample of weird rain that is correlating with a whole town falling ill would kind of be top priority and that's not just something you would like kind of fucking lose not only did the sample go missing but there's no pictures there's no videos there's no physical evidence of this rain even occurring the, all the rain like the rain it's like it's gone like there are no more samples at all and i like i get that it was 1994 but at the same time people had cameras people had camcorders me personally i would have gone out there with the disposable camera and i want to try to you know but there's just like all that we have is just like these people retelling their experiences just weird to me because the washington state department of health and the department of ecology am i saying that right hello <laughs> they are trying so hard to convince people that the whole town becoming sick has nothing to do with this weird rain and again just to reiterate this is literally only happening in oakville washington so it's just, I don't, I just, in my head, and I'm not a scientist or anything, but in my head, I would look for the common denominator. And the common denominator in this situation is the weird rain occurring six times over three weeks and then everybody getting sick. And then once the rain stops and all the symptoms subside, up to seven weeks later, everybody's fucking fine. So mm, whatever. Okay. So there is this theory that the gel rain is actually a result of like a airplane dropping its bathroom waste down. So people thought this, but the FAA came out and was like, absolutely not. Because first of all, we can't dump waste like midair. That's just, we're not allowed to do that. Second of all, we dye it blue so that you can tell like what it is. So this is kind of like a little silly one, but a lot of people think that... <laughs> that the mysterious gel rain is like from diapers like because you know how like when a diaper swells up it has like that mushy gel stuff in it people think that's what it is okay so if it is that one ew two if it is that why is there a substance that is making people ill and killing animals in a baby diaper whatever just a little i don't believe that one at all but that's just some people think that so then there's a theory that the military were out in the pacific like running bombs testing bombs and they oh my god so a bomb exploded a school of jellyfish and it dispersed into the air into a rain cloud and the rain cloud traveled 50 miles inland just over oakville washington and it rained like the remains of jellyfish the air force admits that yes oh my god this is so silly this is the air force admits that yes they were in fact running bomb tests in the pacific around that time they adamantly deny any knowledge or any responsibility for the creation or disbursement of this weird jelly rain they want absolutely no part of the shenanigans they're just like hard no no wasn't us sorry plus also you have to fucking think this rain happened six times over three weeks so if bombs if a single bomb blew up a single school of jellyfish you're meaning to tell me that for three weeks the dead jellyfish came up into the fucking rain clouds and it traveled all the way 50 miles inland just to oakfield washington six times in three weeks and just rain dead jellyfish on people that's how it happened got it also if it's a dead animal wouldn't it stink like bad it would smell like shit right it's a fucking rotting 
animal flesh. Um, but nobody reported any kind of like nasty smells or anything. So I'm going to pass on that theory personally because it, it doesn't make any sense. Like I'm not a weatherman. I don't know how all of that like, oh, evaporation clouds. Well, like I don't really know how all of that works. Okay, I'm not smart. I was raised in the cold. Give me a break. But I know enough to know that the math ain't mathing and that just doesn't seem realistic. I like I'm not just being an asshole. Like the people who live in Oakville and lived in Oakville at that time and were actively experiencing what was happening feel the exact same way I do. So this Oakville blog incident was actually one of the segments on an episode of Unsolved Mysteries and I'll link it in the description. I actually watched it here on YouTube. Um, and you know, Dottie and Sonny and Mike McDowell and other residents of Oakville were also interviewed for the segment. They reported that prior to the weird jelly rain that happened, there was a lot of like military aircraft activity going on. And there was a lot of like blacked out aircrafts like flying over the town. And they think that their town was part of a biological experiment just to like see if they'll get sick, if they release like these little blobs. Cause you know, there's like a lot of secret military testing that occurs around that area. And there's a lot of places in Oakville that are off limits to the public. So they strongly do believe that their town was unfortunately victim to biological experiments. Earlier I said that Mike McDowell concluded that these jelly blobs were almost like a vessel to safely transport the virus or bacteria safely to its intended resting place without the virus or bacteria dying because they do die with time and they die with exposure. Um, so basically these blobs were like little cars to get these little sickies down where they need to be just so the government for funsies can see what will happen if they introduce these weird things to people and people will die. And they just ended up getting people a whole lot of ear infections and murking a bunch of cute little animals. So that's cool. And I mean, it's not like the government actually does shit like that. You know, it's not like they fucking created AIDS. And it's not like they created crack cocaine on purpose and introduced it to poor communities on purpose. They wouldn't do something like that. We can trust our government, you know. I don't know. Personally, I lean more towards that theory as well. All right, guys, that's all I have for you tonight. If you watched till the end, thank you so much. And I just want to say a huge thank you to getting me just over 1,700 subscribers. That seems pretty insignificant, but for me, that's not insignificant at all. It's crazy the amount of love and support that I've gotten recently. And I know a lot of you guys are here from like my Scientology content. Um, and I want to say like a huge thank you to Aaron Smith Levin from Growing Up in Scientology and my homie Doug Kramer from Days But Not Confused for giving me a platform to talk about my experience within Scientology and helping me promote my channel. If you are into cults and if you're into cult busting and if you're into like understanding how intelligent people can fall victim to cult brainwashing, I highly suggest you check out either one of their channels or anybody's content from the SP TV community. I will link all of those channels as well as my sources in the comments and I highly suggest you watch it. Check it out. Check out my Scientology videos if you're not here from it and I'll see you soon. Bye.